öffnen. Guten Tag. So. Today I was thinking I'd say something about um about playing weird indie video games like uh, art games, personal games, journal games, poems in the form of games. I don't actually know what outsider art is, what the words mean. I know what people... I know what I have seen in galleries under that description. But I don't know if that's what it is, because I'm remembering things like, um, in that, uh, A History of Rock Music in 500 Words by Andrew Dickey, the podcast, um, link in the down there, uh, there's, um, one of the episodes, he talks about how there were, and there was some project to preserve music. And they knew exactly, like, the people doing this music preservation project to record the cultural history of the country knew exactly what kind of music they expected to find to preserve and made the people who recorded for that project record that. It, it, it gets put in the gallery as outsider art, but what that art is, is defined by what the galleries think outsider art is. So I don't know what outsider art is. I know what I saw in galleries and news, and, and like, in non-fiction YouTube videos, but I don't know what it is. And I, like, it, when I hear the words outsider plus art, I think art made by people outside communities that make art. And that's a lot of video games, especially things like Twine Games and Bitsy Games. Games made using game tools which are designed to be used by people who haven't made a game and haven't studied making games, but have played games and have this idea in their head of what a game take is and want to use something to make something that means something to them. Uh, so, kitchen is so untidy. It feels like that should be outsider art, but the outsider art that I've seen hasn't been nearly as queer as what I've run into, I mean, not surprisingly, but as one I've run into in terms of games by people who don't, um, games by people who aren't part of the system, comics by people who aren't part of the system, um, I really like it. I, I like jam games and weird experimental games and journal games and art games and autobiographical games. Um, I, I have a series that I started on this channel and haven't really added to. There's a couple entries that I could upload for the series that I just haven't done it yet <sighs> called PackBatLovesItch.io because um, Itch.io has a bunch of these kinds of games. It's, it's a platform for game jams and for indie games and for for obscurities. You could talk about similar kinds of stuff with the Itch.io games as with 
fan fiction. Not. I feel as if archive of our own has a culture and kind of in. Um. It's not as varied as like games on itch.io, but um. Again, like there's a, there's a thing going on where it's it's you see the some of them are just little small things that are fun and they're not they don't change what you think games are but they're fun and some of them. <sighs> You play one of these games, and you realize that you haven't seen it before. There's... I think that's part of what makes it really cool, is, is playing a game and being like, this isn't... Um, like, this game, I think a lot about, like, the processes that produce, um, the, the mental things that people create. Like, 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 when you make a video game, or a movie, or a book, there's actual processes that happen in your mind and body in, in, your fundraising, if you need fundraising, and so on. There's processes that happen that, in in who you think you're making it for and what you think they need, there are processes that happen that change what it ends up being. And... I like weird little things, and I like... I like there was there's this game I played called Canvas, which is like it is a game for a mist jam, and it feels like playing that kind of game. It's you know that you're playing a game, which the person who made this game was like mist. It's cool. I'm gonna do it too, and it's cool. Like it is. It's not the most perfect thing in the world, but it's it it's. One of the things that you find, uh, this is coherent, I guess part of the course. One of the things you find in looking at art that doesn't come from, doesn't come from a process that commercial art comes from, is you get to see, you get to see some of the mirror image of the filters that are made there. It's you get to see like some of the things where you know you wouldn't have seen this in a commercial game, even if you can't say what it is or you're not sure that you wouldn't have seen it. It's just you. You play a game. And you're like, I. Don't think I would have experienced this. I mean, you experience a lot of stuff in commercial games, but also you just like the the there was some game which was just this weird little poem. And there was a game which was uh, uh, it, there's one game which is a weird little poem about the ocean that the ocean would grant wishes and stopped granting wishes and you could and it was about um it's about the kind of thing you see from people who suffered an emotional neglect where they are always serving other people and they can't express their own needs and it's not healthy so, that i it's possible to get that kind of thing in a commercial game. 
it's but the the like polish pulls games away from that it, it, the the kind of polish that people want for commercial products and i don't know i don't i just I'm trying to say something deep and insightful, but what I'm saying is just that there are games made for the artists who made them that wouldn't be made if they were being made for money. Like, not just that the people wouldn't have paid for them to be made, but they, the, 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 the person making the game, if it was like, here, I want you to make a game about X, here's money, they wouldn't have made the game that they made when it wasn't about money. When, when money had nothing to do with it. It's... And... In many ways I'm making a virtue of necessity because I don't have a job and money to buy games. Not many, not often, not generally. But I do... I can play a game that someone made just to have this exist and put out on the in the world to be like here is the thing i want i want it to be i want it to exist and i wanted to put it out there and if 5 people see it then it's a success cuz 5 people saw my thing it would have been zero if I hadn't made it. And you... That's worthwhile, I think. Like, sometimes those things can become big. But I think there's... I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this. Just, I... Really love playing these... Weird games that aren't about, um, a core gameplay loop and a, and polished assets and everything else. It's good. I think it's worthwhile. I think you end up with different people in the games and you end up with different different ideas in the games and you end up with games where the point is different when you, when you when you make games for other reasons That's what I was thinking about talking about today. I'm gonna dump these tea leaves inside my cup and uh, get going. Have a good one. Play some games. <laughs>